Hello everyone, welcome to Blue Table Talks. I'm Sherry Hubert, the Associate Dean of Admissions at Duke University's Fuqua School of Business. Welcome to those of you who are new to Blue Table Talks, and welcome back to those of you who are just old pros and join us every session. This is our final episode of the fall, but we will be back. But we've saved um, some of the best for last with this session focusing on women at, at Fuqua and in uh, honor of Women's uh, History Month. So this particular session is called Fierce Females at Fuqua, and we're going to share uh, stories and backgrounds and experiences of our panelists and their successes that they've had here at Fuqua, their successes that they've had prior to coming to Fuqua, and then what they are up to in the world as they embark after they, their degree program. Without further ado, I'd love to have you get to know our panelists who join me today. And so I'm gonna ask each of them to introduce themselves briefly because we'll get you know, into more of their story in a little bit. But can you just kind of give us a sense of you know, who are you, what program are you a part of, what did you do before? If you go, we have representatives from our daytime MBA program, our one-year specialized master's program, as well as our global executive MBA program. So I'll kick it off to you, Queen. Thank you. Uh, so I'm Queen Wokanea. I'm a second-year daytime MBA student from Nigeria. Um, before business school, I was in international development, um, and I'll be going into consulting. So very happy to be here today. Amazing. I am Lizzie Fleming. I am in the Masters of Management program, Foundations of Business, from San Francisco, California. And before this, I went to Duke University undergrad, where I played on the women's volleyball team. And I'm honored to be here and be a part of this conversation. Awesome. Hello, my name is Dr. Choyun Small. I am in the Global Executive MBA program, fourth term, almost done. Yay! <laughs> um, I am a, a mental health therapist and a mental performance coach for professional athletes as well as entrepreneurship or entrepreneurs who are going through the entrepreneurship through acquisition process. And I'm Maggie Wedholm. I'm a second year here at the Fuqua Daytime MBA program. I'm originally from Annapolis, Maryland. And before coming to Fuqua, I was an artillery officer in the Army active duty. And yeah, really excited to be here alongside all these wonderful women. Yes. Yeah. Well, great. Well, let's get right into the conversation. So I'm curious to know what brought you to the decision to pursue your business degree? We have a lot of variety here in terms of the programs that you represent. But maybe you can share for the audience, for anyone um, who's contemplating this journey or who's in the midst of the application process, what was it that was important to you in terms of pursuing your business degree? Who wants to start? I'll start. Um, so I have a, a doctorate, so I had zero plans on going back to school. Um, my brother and I, we were visiting London uh, last year, February 2023, and I'm a nerd. I love reading books, and so I was in the bookstore in the airport, and I just picked up a book randomly. was not thinking about school, but it was titled something along the effects of things they don't teach you in Harvard at Harvard Business School. And so I'm thinking, I'm an entrepreneur. That'll save me $100,000. I'll just buy this $20, $20 book. This would be awesome. I bought the book, began reading it, and I just really began, I'm a believer, and I just really began to feel that Jesus was speaking to me saying, you need to go back to school. The knowledge that you have, great, it's gotten you to this level, but but where I'm desiring to take you, you don't have the business acumen, you don't have the human capital, there's so much that I need to instill in you and you need to learn. And so here I am, I decided, I picked Duke because I just had just an affinity towards North Carolina, I applied to other ones, but it just, Duke made most sense, so. Yeah, yeah. and you have chosen the Global Executive um, MBA program. Yes. So you continue to practice. Why did you decide to pursue that particular program over, say, like, say the weekend executive? MBA yes. Program? So I'm in the mental health industry, and it is an, an epidemic across every single continent. I desire to expand what I'm doing and make it a global business. And so the global executive program made the most sense because we travel to almost every continent and it allows us to learn about different uh, companies, learn about the culture, and just build network yeah. while I'm in the program. And I still maintain those relationships to this day so that when I do prepare to plant the business in that country, mm -hmm. I've already established those relationships. Okay, wonderful. Yeah. Who else would like to share? Perhaps, you know, why they decided on their degree as well as why Fuqua? Yeah, I can go. Um, I was active duty military before this, like I said. Um, when I was an undergrad, I was a political science major, history minor, so nothing to do with business. And I was actually on deployment 
Um, I was coming up on three years, and you know, the four-year mark for most um, for most officers is the time when you decide, okay, am I going to stay in? Am I going to get out? Do something else? It's a really pivotal time in your career. Um, and so I started really thinking about that. I knew that I'd always wanted to go and get my master's, but I never really considered business. And I was actually having a conversation with somebody I did ROTC with um, at Lehigh University um, during undergrad. And he asked me if I'd ever considered um, an MBA because I was looking into business. And I hadn't, and that really got me thinking, and I actually had some conversations with other friends who went straight into business from the military. Mm -hmm. And it just, you know, while some people can make fantastic careers out of doing that, I really wanted to kind of put myself on the same pl playing field as a lot of my peers who had been working, not only had business in undergrad experience, but had been working in the business world for several years prior um, to getting their MBAs. And it just, it truly is such a launch pad for your career for somebody who is pivoting. Um, and I, you know, spent a lot of time networking with people, making sure it's the right decision for me. Also, um, the GI Bill is a fantastic resource um, that the VA provides for people leaving the military. And it just all made sense and it all fit. And as for why Fuqua, my husband is still active duty um, and he was coming here to Fort Liberty to pursue a career in special operations. And so I looked at Duke and UNC and fortunately for, for me, it worked out to be here and it's just been a fantastic time. Oh, wonderful. So wonderful. Excellent. Who wants to go? So for me, um, so I worked in this national development before business school, and um, that involved like managing programs in economic development for foreign aid agencies. And during COVID, I noticed, of course, like with the whole um, need to kind of facilitate economies, um, kind of like the funding we're getting from these agencies were dwindling. Um, and I could see the communities that we were serving, they still needed the work that we were doing. So I was thinking about like, how, is the, how can I actually find a way to scale these and sustain these? And I think the only thing that made sense was kind of being involved in private sector. Um, I knew that I couldn't speak that language yet coming from like the nonprofit, and I really wanted to learn how to speak that language, influence people, but at the same time, like kind of improving my leadership skills. And for me, I thought like business school is the perfect place to learn all these skills. And Fuqua, um, with my interest in social impact, the Center for the Advancement of Social Entrepreneurship is one of the leading centers in business school, like focused on impact investing. So it was kind of like a match made in heaven. Mm -hmm. I knew I had to apply, and I was very excited when I got in. Yeah, and you were in Nigeria when you made the decision? Yes, I was. Wonderful. So yeah. I'd love to come back and talk to you about kind of your experience sure. um, you know, going to school and pursuing your education here in the US. What about you, Lizzie? Yeah, Fuqua for me was the perfect storm. I, I mentioned earlier I was on the volleyball team here during my undergrad experience. And due to COVID-19, we received an extra year of eligibility from the NCAA. So the program I'm in is just one year, which is perfect for that timeline. I was able to come back and play my fifth season with the team that I absolutely love while also furthering my education. I was also a political science undergrad mm -hmm. and I want to go into finance. So I knew I wanted more of a business education. And what I love about the curriculum is it's all over the place. You get marketing, accounting, um, financial analysis, you name it. So it's really nice as somebody who's trying to figure out exactly what career path I want to take to have access to all different sorts of learning processes and experiences in this program. So it worked out really well and I'm so happy to be here. Oh, wonderful. So we talk about you know Team Fuqua mm -hmm. and you know, it's not just kind of a mantra, but it's also the way in which we work, we set up teams, we set up the structure in terms of how you interact with your classmates, you interact with each other. So maybe you could talk a little bit about what is it like working on teams, what have you learned, and what are your, the unique insights that you feel like you've been able to, to bring to your teams, um, one, just because of your own life experiences, but also uniquely because you are a fierce female. Yes, you know? yes. Who wants to take on that? I can start. I think um, coming to business school for me was is, has been so pivotal because a lot, of, all of my experience thus far has been very hierarchical management. So you're in a position as an officer in the military, and you have people working for you, and whether or not they want to, they kind of, you know, they have to do what you yeah. you say, and there is an art to that. But um, coming here, I've really been able to hone my skills working with peer groups. So um, I'm involved on campus. I work with the Duke Armed Forces Association, Fuqua Special Olympics Club, um, and it's it really is um, just 
an art to working with your peers as opposed to somebody who mm -hmm. even in if, if it is like in the civilian world you're working with someone it's not as hierarchical but you know it's a paid job to be there and there it's been great to really hone my skills of getting everyone involved get everyone excited and motivated to be a part of something that they could definitely just not be involved in and and you know everyone here is giving a lot of their time and themselves to be involved in things on campus um, so I've really enjoyed working with that aspect of Fuqua. Mm -hmm. um, I would say from the top down and all around I've experienced Team Fuqua so I'm like I said, wanting to figure out like how do I build and scale my company. So the Julie Craigs of the world, the individuals here, staff, Ben Thompson, John Cohen, and the Innovation Center, they've been just so instrumental in helping me not feel alone in this process of mm -hmm. building and just getting acclimated to the area. Uh, so top down, amazing. And then when it comes to just working with teams, I'm actually uh, doing the FCCP process as well, where we partner with uh, Wimba's as well, doing consulting for a company. Uh, actually, uh, we we read the McKinsey Way book, and I discovered like, oh, wait, consulting is so difficult. So power to you. I can't wait to hear more about that. But what I've learned is as a uh, an individual who's working used to working by herself teamwork is very difficult mm -hmm. especially when it's i, I just want to do the task and get it done by myself mm -hmm. but now it's it's expanding me to shift from being totally self-reliant to i need you to help me finish this and i've loved it because there have been times because quant is is not my uh, love language as one of my uh, colleagues treat us <laughs> and it's not and there's so many brilliant individuals in my group who they're like, quant, yeah, like I eat quant for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. <laughs> so I've found that the strength in that of where I'm weak, they're strong, and I've I've just I've loved that process. Because I am local, although I'm a Gimba, mm -hmm. I've totally taken advantage of learning and meeting daytime students as well, which yeah. has been just a, 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 a nuanced difference from some of my colleagues, and uh, got involved with the entrepreneurship through Acquisition Club, became the um, vice president of external relations. Mm -hmm. So learning to work with uh, daytime students as well, you know, you all's different experiences. It's just mm -hmm. a well-rounded experience of and truly knowing what Team Fuqua actually feels like and actually contributing and not just being a solo person. But no, get get in the team, be a part of the <laughs> yeah. team and contribute as well. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. Mm -hmm. I'm curious, so, you know, this is, of course, you know, our session is really focused on women in business. But, you know, what are the other identities that you guys feel as though show up for you prominently in your day to day? Like how else do you identify? Because we're not a monolith, so. Yeah. And how does that level of identity, in addition to being a woman, either support and give you strength and confidence in, in your programs, or at times is it, you know, a challenge in some certain ways? I think the audience would be interested in hearing kind of some perspectives there. So I think for me, I identify as a Nigerian, but broadly more as an African. Mm -hmm. um, and I think coming into spaces, it could be a, it could be seen as a positive or a negative. Um, a positive because I know that you know there are so many things I bring to the classroom: the diversity of my experience, the richness of exposure to emerging markets. And I always love when we have cases um, on emerging markets in class because I can bring to bear like my real life experiences. So I really like that. Um, I think the downside is it could be seen like, okay, I'm different, um, and okay, like, what would she be able to bring to bear? But at the same time, I turned that into a positive in terms of like, okay, this is my potential, and people tend to get very surprised. But I think for me, coming into Fuqua, something that I've always wanted to do is to improve the thought leadership around emerging markets. So I'm part of the cabinet of the Business in Africa Club, um, which kind of aims to improve the awareness of Africa and be doing business in Africa, working in Africa. And we've done like joint conferences, we've done like speaker series just to get students more acquainted with what it is to work in Africa. And for me that's been very rewarding, like just improving that knowledge um, around the business school so far. So right. good. Yeah. Okay. What about um, how do you see women empowering each other at Fuqua? Have you been a part of spaces where you you've been able to to help empower other or support other women? Yeah, I think speaking of kind of going back to Team Fuqua, I think there's an incredible inclusive environment that this school holds, and everybody's voices are welcome and heard. And 
working on teams, I've been blessed. Both my teams, I've never once felt as if I was less than or anything just because I was a woman. And I think that in and of itself is very empowering and just working alongside incredible females. I've had people in my groups who prior to coming here already had their own startup companies or these incredible job positions or even just really cool things that they're passionate about and just learning about that and learning from our differences. I think that that has been a really rewarding experience of being here as Fuqua, at Fuqua and um, I've just loved every second of it. Yeah. What yeah. other kinds of things are you involved in, in terms of clubs and or? Yeah, so I'm actually an admissions ambassador oh, here. Yeah, yeah, which I love doing because we <laughs> yeah. get to talk to all, yeah. again, these amazing, there's so many amazing prospective students who apply mm -hmm. to Fuqua and mm -hmm. it's really an honor to be here and I think everybody takes a lot of pride in that. And so talking to all of these amazing applicants and hearing about their backgrounds and what they can bring to the table, it's really exciting because you know that that's the future of Fuqua and that's mm -hmm. the future of more students to come to learn from each other's differences and continue to grow. Yeah, yeah. How do you think about, any of you think about like self-care, how important is that? I mean, you probably really yes. understand that. <laughs> Not that but I'm it, great at it, but. Yeah. <laughs> but and it's not something that just impacts, you know, one gender, but in general, you know, more and more individuals are really focused on health and wellness. We just literally had our MBA mm -hmm. association had their health yeah. and wellness fair yesterday. But thinking about self-care, mental health, physical health and wellness, you know, how do you incorporate that into your day-to-day -day as, a, as a student and as a working professional? One thing that I had to really sit with when I first started the program was being a beginner again and you know as a recovering perfectionist <laughs> recovering <laughs> sometimes I relapse though and and as a, a, a overachiever with unrelenting standards sometimes which is very unhealthy there in the very beginning it was so hard for me to sit and say I don't know this stuff it's like, I don't know the answer. Mm -hmm. I'm used to being the expert over here, and now you're telling me I'm back in elementary school, <laughs> metaphorically speaking. And so for me, self-care, so funny, I, I, every day I would call my mom, financial accounting was in the very beginning, and that was so tough <laughs> for me. I would call my mom and be like, woo chow, I'm just, I'm, I'm doing financial accounting again. And so she, she <laughs> now she, off the cliff. I was like, uh, <laughs> so I would have to call my therapist and say like, I need a session. Like, I am not okay. Like, I think I'm, like, being re-traumatized again because of the pressure I was putting on myself. Right. So what I ended up having to do was say, trillion, it's okay. It's okay mm -hmm. to be a beginner. It's okay. And my mom said it so simply. She said, you're not supposed to know everything. That's right. Like, you're a student. And I'm like, mm -hmm. that's why you're my mama. <laughs> <laughs> that's why you're my mama. Yes. Um, so for me, it's just having that realization of it's okay to be a beginner again. It's it's okay to not have all the answers. Um, and and take a chill pill. Like, mm -hmm. it's okay. Yeah. yeah. Lighten up on yourself. Yeah. And not go, go. You know, not kind of buy into the FOMO. Right? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How about you, Maggie? Yeah, I think for me, um, there's so much going on, and uh, I mean, I did a lot in undergrad as well as coming here. Like, there's so much I want to be involved in, mm -hmm. um, and you know every single day there's something you could be going to yes. and you just kind of have to um like you said like take the pressure off yourself and tell yourself it's okay you know you might miss this one thing but you give yourself more energy to come the next day and prepare mm -hmm. for something else and one thing that i've found is um while planning things for different events like different club events every single weekend on a, every single day honestly there's clubs that have events um and something that's really helped me is remembering like i can reach out to classmates this isn't just on me regardless of leadership position and whatever club i'm in um if something if i need help with something usually people just don't realize that they're not helping more or that they could be helping more and so just remembering to be vocal mm -hmm. and speak out and say hey like can you help me with this event um, i'm really kind of struggling or um, you know, I have something that came up. I want to be able to make this family event. Can you please, like, kind of take the reins? Mm -hmm. um, and that's been really, really helpful, just remembering it's not all on you, even if you are in a leadership position, and there's so many people that are willing to help. You just kind of have to make that ask and be willing to step out and, and say that. Yeah. That's okay. Yeah. yeah. Are there particular courses that you have taken or professors that are, you know, have been really inspirational for you that you can share that might be interesting for people? Yeah, as someone going into finance who has no background in it, um, I think um, one professor in particular, Professor John Bewley, he has been absolutely fantastic. Um, on one hand, yes, his classes are great, and he's very he's wonderful at explaining topics that people might not have any um, background in. At the same time, it's also teaching people who might have 
that's their only background is this one particular subject. He does a really good job with that. What's the subject? So we have to be um, explicit so that people Yeah, I uh, took corporate restructuring with him. Okay. So corporate going through um, things like bankruptcies. Okay. Um, again, we have such a broad depth of background here at Fuqua. Mm -hmm. Some people that was their whole job was working on those types of things. And then someone like me, I just never even broached the subject before. Um, but aside, apart from that as well, though, um, the amount of support he has given to the veteran community has been just absolutely fantastic. We do Tuesday happy hours with the club and he is without fail like there at least, you know, once a month. Um, I wasn't able to make the one last night, but you know, apparently he's holding court with everybody and um, I just think professors like that just make such a huge difference. Um, I actually just found out that he was one of the people that streamlined the Yellow Ribbon program here and making sure Duke was, wow. I don't know how much you all know about the Yellow Ribbon program, yeah. but um, it basically allows private schools to kind of meet the same standard as state schools with, regarding the GI Bill payments. So where um, a public school or a private school, you won't, the GI Bill won't cover the full tuition where it would have, uh, 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 sorry, uh, private school won't cover the same tuition fully as a public school, um, it kind of bridges that gap and wow. kind of make equalizes um, the opportunity for people to use their GI Bill. So that's been huge. Yeah. That's so good. Um, Patrick, uh, Ambassador Deddy is, um, uh, or I said, said it backward, Ambassador Pastor, uh, Patrick, Patrick Deddy yeah, has been so instrumental in uh, just teaching us about, so he is very well versed about Latin America, so he was our professor for Global Immersion Experience, so every country that we travel to, we have a professor that's teaching on, this is the culture, this is the landscape, and mm -hmm. uh, he's just been so helpful in, because Latin America is the first country I would like to invest in, and like his knowledge is off the roof. You know, it's through the through the charts. And so, uh, thank you, Ambassador Duddy, if you're watching this. <laughs> I've already I've already passed the class, so it's not you know rounding points here. <laughs> but also just his willingness. I remember just walking in the hallway. Also, advantage of if you are uh, considering an executive program, consider also moving here because you have the advantage of, of experiencing the professors live. And I was just walking down the hallway and I saw him. He's like, Trillian, he's like, let's just go walk and, you know, have lunch. And I had already eaten, but we just sat and talked <laughs> and it was just, he's just amazing. Um, so that's my, my person, my, my professor I, has been impact to me. Anyone take any courses that are kind of focused on women, women in business? There's a women in leadership course. Anyone take any, any of Ask You Rosette's courses? Any female professors? I haven't that yet. Yeah. Really love? So Leslie Marks, mm -hmm. she's our, um, she was my yeah. economics professor. Yeah. Economics. It would, mm -hmm. That woman is so brilliant. I don't know if we like cross intersect with professors, but yeah, sometimes they will teach him both. But mm -hmm. Sometimes they'll focus on. Yeah, them. she's she's been one that's been very instrumental. Uh, Catherine Shipper, Professor Catherine okay, Shipper yeah. as well. Uh, she she has taught me how to think beyond my basic, like conceptual, you know, as far as like, conceptualizing a bit of information. It's take this information, but ask multiple layers of questions to get down to why do you actually believe that? Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes we think here, but Catherine Shipper, Professor Catherine Shipper, she's like, and why, and why, and why, and why, and you're like, Wow, this is stretching me, but mm -hmm. but I love it. Yeah, excellent. I haven't done any women in leadership courses, but I've taken two classes that have been taught by female professors that were very instrumental in my career. The first was Impact Investing mm -hmm. by Professor Kathy Clark, who is like one of the leading yes. voices in social impact in the U.S. I'm just learning what she's doing in that space around impact measurement, impact reporting, has been something that I will take into my career going forward. The second is Leadership Communication by Professor Harrison. I remember starting that class. Um, as a caveat, I hated public speaking, but that's actually why I came to business school, just to be able to influence um, um, people and conversations. And she, she could tell that I was stubborn and kind of learning, expressing myself, and she just kept pushing me and pushing me. Um, and I'll forever be grateful um, for Professor Harrison as well mm -hmm. for that. Oh, wonderful. Excellent. Yeah. Yeah. What are, you know, are there any times in your experiences that you've um, had moments of imposter syndrome? And if so, what do you do? Like, where do you find community within, within your networks, within Fuqua? How do you find community? What helps you get through? those moments yeah going a little. yeah I can speak on this one I think it's inevitable being at such a place of excellence to feel a little bit of imposter syndrome I think everybody can attest to the fact mm -hmm. that they probably felt it at some point point. and I think 
what I tend to do is just remind myself that you're here for a reason. And to me, it's as simple as that, because once you recognize that you got into the school, you're passing your classes, you know, you're helping out your teammates, that in and of itself is proof that you're adding value to the program and also learning the content and getting to know valuable people and making amazing connections. So just reminding yourself that that's kind of the basis of it all. That's kind of what I tend to do to reel myself back in. and. I think once you keep it at that base level, it, it tends to kind of take care of itself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There, there's been so many times where I would think, am I cut out for this? You know, it's, it's so heavy on the quad side. And so my brain, <laughs> at the time my brain would glitch, like <laughs> you know, that part of your brain is not working right now. So uh, th there would be times where I, you know, I would be very self-critical of like, ew, you should just stick to the, give me your emotions, tell me what you think type of thing. <laughs> Um, but in those moments, you know, I just stop and say, well, every expert used to be a beginner, mm -hmm. right? And, and everyone who has an amazing knowledge, maybe they did, maybe they were two years old and their parents did put, you know, algebra in their hand. <laughs> I didn't have that experience and that's not my strong suit. But one thing that this experience has just really taught me is um, become someone different. That's actually what, what I said when I came to this program. It's my one goal. I want to become someone I didn't have in mind. And as a visionary, I, I always have something in mind. And I'm like, well, I guess you're going to be a quad lover of Excel spreadsheets <laughs> because that is not who I am. But just opening, allowing myself to just be open to mm -hmm. the challenge. And it's you're not this now. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean you won't be in the future. So you, you've made me think about something. What, have, what has been kind of an aha moment for each of you? Like something that you had thought of, thought you, this experience would be like? Now that you're in this experience, what has been that either different, you know, different than your perceived sense, or you know, more positive than what you thought, or you know, more challenging than what you thought? Like, what's an aha moment that you've had from this experience so far? I can speak on that one. Mm -hmm. um, I've done a couple of internships in various financial industries, and. You know, they kind of talk this lingo and there's phrases and such. And coming into this program, because I was a political science undergrad, I wasn't always familiar with it. And I was like, oh my gosh, I'm never going to get this. Mm -hmm. And then as you take more classes and as the professors start to use that lingo, I'm like, oh, like I know what that means now. <laughs> yes. And it all kind of starts to click. Yeah. And for me, that was a really rewarding moment because to your point, it's like, okay, I can actually mm -hmm. start to understand this and I can excel at this. And I think that was my aha moment of I'm actually, I'm learning. Yes. Yeah. And I, and I, can, I can get this I done. Can. Yeah. That's the point. We're learning. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I think for me, um, it kind of goes off of the question you just asked before this about imposter syndrome and something that's really helped me um, as someone who also was just not, I, I did not think that like anything quantitative, anything mm -hmm. finance would be something that I would um, study a lot and much less go into, yeah. but that's all I've been taking this second year here, um, in part to better myself, but in part because it is so interesting to me and I do love lear learning new things. Mm -hmm. um, but something that's helped me a lot is going to previous mentors, current mentors, um, and just asking them about how it was for them going through. And most of the time when you do that, you're met with a, oh, I was the same way, if not much more lost oh, than you are, <laughs> which is so helpful to hear because I feel like, I mean, most people, at least at a place like this, are just so confident in everything they do, and it's hard to kind of picture behind the curtain of what drives that confidence. Is it something that is always, like they're always just that confident, and they're not. It's just something that they, they've they built um, through time, um, and there's expertise behind that for sure. But having those conversations with people you look up to, and having hearing from them that it was never that easy, and it still isn't that easy, and they're still learning new things every day has been fantastic. And so I think for me, an aha moment for sure has been hearing from a mentor, you know, whether it's at Fuqua or beyond, that they felt the exact same way that I have, um, whether it's yeah. you know in an econ class or in, during my internship while I was actually on the job. Um, I think that's been really helpful yeah. to think, okay, like I can do this and I do belong here. It doesn't matter. I mean, I've done amazing things in the past, but this is what I'm doing now and I can pivot and be successful. Right. Yeah. That I do belong here part. Yeah. It's, 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 mm -hmm. When you find your, when you find that, oh, everyone here is a, a high achiever, and then you also realize, oh, and you struggle too? Yeah. And you struggle too? <laughs> well, you have oh. to be vulnerable. Yes. Yeah. You have to be 
vulnerable enough to say, hey, I'm struggling. Yes. And then that opens up a space for other people to say, you know what, I feel the same way. Thank yeah. you so much. Right? It's, like, it's, thank God. Yeah. <laughs> it's so funny. I just asked someone for help in a class. I know it's the end of second year and I'm still asking for tutoring help. <laughs> That's so funny. Well, I'm just this while I'm here, you know. So I asked my friend who's one of the TAs and she we met to like go over some st some finest stuff and she goes, I actually had to go do a full refresher for this too because mm -hmm. I didn't use this at all in my internship on the job. And I'm like, okay, that makes me feel yes. way better. Like I don't need to, you know, whip about a discounted cash flow or multiple evaluations <laughs> just on the fly. So, yeah. yeah, I like carried my my cases with me for like ten years. It's <laughs> <laughs> a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. The digital well, binders are right. strong and they're backed up on multiple files. So I have yes. to. Yes. Like, which case was that? Again? Exactly. So for for those, and then we're going to switch to kind of folks who are thinking about applying. But for those who have been admitted and they're about to embark. Do you have any advice for what they should be doing now to prepare or anything like I wish I would have moments for you guys as you were starting your program, knowing what the experience is like now? I wish I would have dove in way more into uh, any, anything quantitative related. If that's not a strong suit, uh, we did have to take a few Coursera courses um, and I think it's called uh, MBA math. Yeah. And so there were mm -hmm. those things. Had I known like the extent of the challenge, I would have maybe even before that just taken it upon myself to throw myself in a little bit more courses as well. It's funny because I was about to say the exact opposite. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say just have fun, relax. <laughs> <That's You will. laughs> Excited you come in, the better the experience is going to be. Yeah. At Fuqua specifically, yeah. we have summer term, and it is not quant heavy. It is a lot of discussion based things, and in my experience, at least, like, yeah, we have MBA math in the summer, but like, you do learn, like, you have the resources here when you get on campus. Um, so not to, to just kind of your point. I think <laughs> that's, that's great. I probably so should have done that, <laughs> but I think that there is something to be said for just yes. relaxing, getting excited for the fact that you're about to go on a two year. Mm -hmm. um, your, a two-year journey where you mm -hmm. get to focus on just yourself. You know, everyone's coming from the professional world, um, and just yeah, just getting ready to enjoy it. And yeah. but there's room for both. To enjoy <laughs> the journey. Right. I think for me, as an international student, it's kind of like in, in addition to having fun, just spending some more time with family because mm -hmm. it might be some time before you get to see them again. Mm -hmm. So just having that intentional time with family. <laughs> Um, and I think just keep an open mind. Like we always come to business school saying, oh, I want to pivot into consulting, banking, but just be open to learning. And if you come with that mindset, I think you will really thrive here. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, there's so many different career paths. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anything yeah. yeah. for you? I kind of agree with all different perspectives. <laughs> yes. um, I would say, that if you don't have a background in something, don't worry about it because the professors really do break mm -hmm. it down to the very beginning. So you won't be at a disadvantage if you don't do yeah. additional work other than the work that Fuqua asks you to do. Um, but you, you really will learn it from the very beginning. And because there are so many different courses, there's gonna be some that you don't like, but that's also equally as valuable as the ones you do because you kind of learn what maybe you don't want to do versus yeah. what you do. So that kind of speaks to your open mind point. Yeah. It, it really is important because it can be really valuable in determining what you want your next steps to be. Yeah, and you are an athlete, right? So you were mm -hmm. an athlete at the same time that you're going through this program. Anything yes. that you needed to do above and beyond to really prepare? or to set the expectation around other people? Yeah, in the fall, my team was all athletes, and we were all in season, um, which I actually think was really incredible because we learned to be very proactive in our communication. Mm -hmm. You know what the due dates are, you know what's upcoming, so being able to talk about times when people can meet and get all on the same page, and it can't be a Friday scrambling to finish a case because everybody's actively participating in a competition. So learning to have that proactive communication and being able to say, hey, this week is crazy for me, I might need a little help, or hey, this week is not so crazy for me, I can pull the weight. Being able to have those conversations I think will be really instrumental in my career as you know, you'll know you continue to collaborate with peers and work on teams and such. So I actually think being a student athlete adds a different yeah. set of challenges, but it also has its own rewards. Yeah, yeah absolutely, and the communication is key, right? Mm -hmm. so, yeah. 
Alrighty, so let's pivot a little bit over to advice that you might have for anyone out there who is in the application process, or maybe they're not yet, but they're contemplating, like, is this something for me? Can I do this? Is this the right time? Um, what advice would you have for someone looking to apply to a business degree program? And were there, as you were going through your application process, you know, thinking back, were there any organizations, events, you know, resources that you took advantage of to really help you through that through that process? Anybody? Yeah. Uh, there were, throughout my process, I was really thinking through, again, my goal coming in was become someone you didn't have in mind. Mm -hmm. Slightly, you still have to have a little bit of a what's the end possibly going to look yeah. like. <laughs> and so I, I really chose the timing, the location, the school, all of that based on like the glimpse of what I thought I would be doing at the end of this. Um, and beyond, also in addition to timing, understanding the timing, if it's a fear base, if it's do I do this or do I not because of fear, I like to say just jump and then build your wings on the way down because at the end of the day if I do it if I do it now if I do it in two years time is still passing and I like to say time is your life and so think about what do I want to do with my life now what do I want to do with my time now right thinking about your family thinking about um, your obligations that you have currently and then you will have in the future it's where I am today, will I in two years be proud of the decision that I've made, regardless of how much it costs, or unless you had like awesome experience right where, <laughs> or, or some companies are paying as well, it's um, will I be proud of that decision, this decision? And if the answer is yes, I'm like, just go for it. Yeah. And then figure out the fear. Right. And you way. had, you know, as a working professional, you had to be, you had to know that you were committed to making the time, right? Right. Which is half the battle. So for those who aren't working, right, you're saying, you know, you don't have that additional level of responsibility. Yeah. What, what, what did the application process look like for you? Did you take advantage of any organizations, resources, mm -hmm. family members? Like, like mm -hmm. what was the journey like in, yeah. in terms of advice to individuals? So I know that FIPA hosts a lot of, like, webinars um, mm -hmm. by different affinity clubs. Um, so I attended a lot of that, especially because I applied from Nigeria. Um, so I attended a lot of like webinars hosted by FIFA, mm -hmm. hosted by the African community, just to understand what does the life of a business student look like and what, are, what is the end goal, what are the opportunities after that. So I really, really utilized that. I also utilized, um, there was like an alumni relations event hosted by Michael Polzan, who's like the head of alumni for the Africa region. And I got to speak with him one-on-one. -on -one, um, and it was also very helpful for me to add color into what the application process was like. So I would say, Try to do as much webinars as you can. Try to set up like you know coffee chats, even cold mm -hmm. call, like mm -hmm. LinkedIn emails. I find that few students are very helpful, yeah. and they're always willing to respond. So if there's anyone that you see has the career that you're kind of looking to pivot to after business school, don't feel afraid to reach out at all because we're always happy to help. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and going off that, a little plug for the admissions <laughs> ambassador, but yeah. on the website there's a link, and there's a bunch of ambassadors, and you can click on our photo, and there's a little bio about where we're from, what we're interested in doing, what we studied in undergrad, etc. And that way people who are thinking about applying can directly reach out to us. And on our end, as you said, FUCO students are more than willing to help. It's true. We'd love to talk yeah. about our experience here because I think we're very proud and happy with our experience here. So reach out to us. You can ask questions about what the admissions process looks like, what the day-to-day -day looks like, what Team Fuqua is all about, and it's such a great resource because we're here now. We yeah. just went through the process, mm -hmm. and we like have such valuable answers for you all that are specific to whoever's asking them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then uh, like on that as well, aside from just like admissions reps, there are every club has their own like specific admissions reps. So I'll use the Duke Armed Forces Association for example. Mm -hmm. We have two admissions reps plus everyone else in the club um, who are more than happy to answer specific questions of um, prospective applicants. And um, most clubs, I know specifically like 
DAFA, we do a veterans symposium in person. So um, prospective students fly out, we put you up, we have, hap we have networking, happy hour, we have alumni come in, do a panel. Um, it's a really fantastic way to get to know each other through the process and make those networking connections. So you have that in-person chance to network. But then on top of that, um, I just think the most important thing you can do throughout the application process is network with people, both to figure out if this is for you, that'll help you answer the question of, should I do this now? Um, what does this look like for me? But it'll also help you kind of get plugged into the community, figure out what the best way is to approach the application process um, at that time. Mm -hmm. so. And where, is anyone a, a part of the Association of Women in Business here? Well, I'm a member. Okay. Yeah, member, member, but well. not, not in an official capacity. <laughs> okay, okay. I'm a member. Okay, yes. wonderful. Have any events that have been, that stood out to you that, yeah, that's a great support too. They recently had the uh, Investing in Women conference, and one of the, one of the panel, uh, one of the women on the panel, I love. She she called it Haku, and you were talking about in what ways have we seen other women really just impacting each other in a powerful way, and it's basically it basically stands for hook a sister up. Yeah. And so, <laughs> and so when basically it's if I see uh, that there's something happening over here that would benefit you, I'm gonna call you up and be like girl opportunity <laughs> yeah. so it's like hook a sister up yeah and like you know speaking for each other or speaking up for each other and really um, you know being a sponsor or you know a voice when that person is this other woman is not in the room but I know it would be advantageous for mm -hmm. for that other woman but right. that was the one conference I went to amazing yeah and they do a similar to the veteran symposium they do a women's leadership weekend mm -hmm. for prospective students to come as well so um, that's a fantastic way to have that in-person networking piece mm -hmm. really get a feel for Fuqua throw in some some apartment visits while you're at it get a feel for Durham but that's yeah. a fantastic opportunity yeah. as well and you know we have a very robust forte um, sponsor as well mm -hmm. so I don't know if any of you are you know availed yourself of mm -hmm. forte foundation before you were applying to business school, but that's another opportunity yes. too, the Forte Foundation. Mm -hmm. Not just as you're going through the application process, but once you're a student here, there's a lot of benefits to those. There's fellowship opportunities, and they have you know the span of you know undergraduate um, opportunities all the way through executive MBA mm -hmm. opportunities mm -hmm. through the Forte Foundation. Yeah. We're a partner across all of those dimensions. So mm -hmm. yeah, another thing to to take advantage of. For yeah, those of you definitely. Actually. Yeah, mm -hmm. I learned a forte as I was applying. Yes, and so yeah. and we also have male allies mm -hmm. here. So okay. as well, we have a male allies um, organization that's a part of the Association of Women in Business um, as mm -hmm. well. So I haven't heard of that yeah. one. I think they just Google renamed it. themselves like Man Ambassadors. But okay. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. Wonderful. Wonderful. So um, one more topic that might be of interest, and that's financing. So mm -hmm. you know, I think financing in general is is something that people have to contend with. And think about uh, the investment is definitely worth it, but it's something that you know, mm -hmm. you know, it's not insignificant. So, and especially for women, that's what we the data shows. Especially for women. So, what are some of the uh, advice or ways in which you thought about you know financing your MBA? Yeah, I can start. I mm -hmm. think um, I had a unique blend of things coming into school that helped me out. First of all, I had 50% of the GI Bill coming out of the military, mm -hmm. so that was fantastic. Um, and then I was fortunate enough to get an impact scholarship here with Cole, our Center of Leadership and Ethics, mm -hmm. um, as well as a Forte Fellowship scholarship. So those things were all wonderful. And um, the cool thing about the impact scholarship is not only are you working with that organization when you come to campus, so we have like health sector management, um, so you're working with that on campus. Cole, we're working with the leadership fellows of the first year, um, but also you do get that monetary aspect of a scholarship. So um, it was really a fantastic program. And I think now it wasn't for me this way, but on your applications, you can indicate I'm interested in EDGE, which is our sustainability, I believe, and then mm -hmm. health sector and coal. You can indicate that on your application as you apply that you're looking to be a part of that scholarship consideration. Yeah, that's so good. Thank you for mentioning that. That was a, a big focus of mine as well. Of I don't want to, I don't want to go into more school debt, you know. <laughs> and so, but I knew I didn't want to limit myself just because of financial. So the Forte scholarship definitely has been instrumental. I um, mean, then also just realizing if I take out a loan. I am confident in um, mm -hmm. the capital that I will yeah. make after this. And so it's like, it's okay, I'll pay that off for the year. Yeah. That, that's just been my mindset, mm -hmm. you know, honestly for me. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And the data does show yes. that, that mm -hmm. you're able to repay those 
Yeah, fairly quickly. quickly. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Similar to um, Maggie as well, I got an impact scholarship, but it was under the K Center, um, and then I also got a 4T fellowship as well, so those have been really instrumental mm -hmm. for financing. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, excellent. Because we do not want financing your MBA to be, or financing your business degree to be a barrier, so mm -hmm. that, is, and that is the goal. Yeah, just to like double tap on that, because I know, you know that's a fantastic opportunity we've had with scholarships, but mm -hmm. Truly, it is not something to stress over while you're at school. You're well taken care of. The finance team here, I've called them up multiple times with questions about things because I do have a partial loan, and it's really not something that should be the barrier. If that's the only barrier you have to coming to business school, mm -hmm. definitely reach out and ask for reassurance in that decision because, it, like you said, it's, it's, it shouldn't be the only thing stopping you. That's right, yeah, absolutely, I love it. Okay, so I'm gonna do a couple of questions for each of you that I think would be interesting for the audience. So Queen, let me start with you. Sure. Um, you know, is this your first time studying in the U.S.? Or you it were? is. Okay, yeah. wonderful. So are there any cultural differences that were really, you know, salient for you? And what, did, what were your first impressions? Anything that would be interesting? Yeah, definitely. So I did my undergrad in the U.K. Um, so my undergrad, and I also went to policy school at LSE in the U.K. And I think just comparing studying in, like, Europe and U.S., I think, first of all, um, UK really encourages more of like independent learning. You have a lot of courses where like you're not really involved in teams, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and I think as a foundational level, that's a good thing just to kind of understand, grow your knowledge and get that foundation. Um, whereas schooling and field planning in the US more broadly, it's a very, there's a very strong focus on team-based learning. And I think that has been very instrumental as you kind of rise up in the workplace. There are some skills that you need to get. There are some soft skills that kind of learning in teams kind of avails you to do that. Mm -hmm. um, I also really appreciate like the applied learning um, here in Fuqua, um, just kind of learning based on cases, learning based on experiential learning. Um, I found that to be very, very um, useful in my journey. Mm -hmm. Do you have an example? So you interned at McKinsey. I did. What was a, a skill or an experience that you were able to take from from school, from your first year, and apply it directly into your in your internship. You found useful. Yeah, I think two skills. So the first, um, there were a few classes um, in first year where we kind of were cold called. So cold calling means like a professor just kind of mentions your name and you have to speak up. And I think and you're very anxious. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I kind of turned that anxiety into kind of like always being prepared mm -hmm. and being on my toes. And in consulting, you find like partners always asking you questions on the fly. And I found that skill very useful during the mm -hmm. summer. Um, and the second thing I already mentioned Professor Harrison earlier around like leadership communication and kind of doing presentations, um, influencing, um, making decisions. And I found that in consulting, we literally have to present every day. Um, so those skills around presenting and communicating um, were very useful at McKinsey mm -hmm. this summer. And then one more question for you: like, What career resources? Because we didn't talk a lot about the career yes. center, but we have such a wonderful and robust mm -hmm. career center and career support. Mm -hmm. What career support resources did you take advantage of? Yeah, so at FICA we have the Career Management Center, um, and within the CMC we have sector leads or industry leads. And I found that um, the consulting lead, Mary Beck, was very um, instrumental in my journey. Um, one because she lived and worked in DC before, but also because she has so much experience in consulting. So just being able to understand the resources there, getting advice, um, especially around behavioral interviews, I found that very useful. And the second thing I found was very useful were my second years back then, because they have literally been through that journey with you. Um, we were paired with like, from the consulting club, we were paired with like buddies who helped us do cases. Um, so they're like a breadth of resources, whether it be like the industry specific clubs or the affinity clubs where you can get buddied up to help you um, kind of improving your recruitment journey or the CMC as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, good. What about you, Trillian? Uh, what led you, um, you know, as a mental health professional, you are coaching individuals and your clients every day. Yes. Um, what self-care tips do you use, and have you shared any of those with your classmates? Like, do they come to you for <laughs> therapy at all, ever? <laughs> Well, I can't like, cross those. Right. I mean, dual relationships. <laughs> but we do have conversations. Yeah. We um, actually, in Santiago, there was me and a few other ladies sitting at a table, and um, one came up and she was like, oh, this is a crying table. I'm not sitting at this table. <laughs> and, and more so what she was saying is this is the, the vulnerable table. We, mm -hmm. We're okay with... Um, just 
being honest, this is where we are right now. Are you okay? Are you not okay? This is what's happening back at home. You mentioned it earlier, but I would say vulnerability has been the, the one of the greatest self-care technique, I don't know if you would call it a technique or just a practice that has truly saved my life in, in many different ways. It has improved my relationship with myself more so because it's, if I can just sit and be honest with me of, with myself and say, I'm not okay. And then be okay with it. Like true healing happens there. Uh, I remember once, uh, several years ago, um, someone was just talking to me, me about like, you, no one waters a, a fake plant. Mm -hmm. So if if you don't, if you're not honest and vulnerable, how do I know that you need something, mm -hmm. right? How do we just open up and say for us to know that we belong? It's well, tell me, tell me if there's a need, and I'm happy to meet it. So uh, we we have this thing now. A few ladies in, in my cohort of like. Where you at? You need a crying <laughs> session? Okay. We could cry right here, right now. <laughs> and, it's, and we're okay with it. Yeah. Can, you, can you describe a typical day as a global executive MBA student, maybe on residency? So for those yeah. who don't know exactly what happens during residency, it's really cool. So fun. So we all arrive at different times, but we do have a set day where we do need to arrive. Uh, the first day there, you have a, a welcome reception. So you can come to that, or if you're like, long day I'm just gonna stay in my, my hotel room we all stay in the same hotel um, so everyone's there if you want just say hey like meet me downstairs we're gonna grab some food so for 10 days you have class from normally 9 930 until about 3 or 4 it just depends on what other activities we have planned so two to three classes every single day which can be exhausting at times but <laughs> MBA school it, it really does it's like a resistance training I call it that because it builds your stamina to balance all life and this at the same time and we uh, we go through uh, we have corporate visits where they have uh, pre-planned some visits with a corporation and you get to choose we also have culture experiences um, e explorations activities where you can just go out into the community and learn about just the, the culture we're like I said done around three or four so after that you're free you're free <laughs> unless you have you know some sort of quiz or homework but most people they just hang out with their groups or just their friends and uh, have dinner and work with your team on whatever assignment may be due, some doing some reading. If you didn't do all your reading before you got there. Um, but yeah, that's, and then the, the last day or so, it's the, the ending dinner. Everyone's like, woosah, before midterms. <laughs> <laughs> and then you fly back home. Some stick around. Some actually, I've done this before where I would arrive a little bit earlier or stay later. Because okay. if you're in the region, you want to explore the yeah. area. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So some have, you know, they'll stay there maybe three weeks. And I'm like, I don't have that in me to stay through. And where have you gone so far? Where, 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 to residency um, we've been there. to Bangkok, Thailand, and we just got back from Santiago, Chile, and then in two weeks, we're heading to New Delhi, India. Okay. So. Oh. And then what's it like when you're back home? What's the distance portion like? Um, so you have uh, four weekends, four to five weekends, I believe, where it's uh, classes on Saturdays from about 9 to 11 p.m. or. 9 to 11 p.m. That's a long day, <laughs> unless it's 9 a.m. So, so it's 9, 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. And it, those aren't those aren't actually required because yeah. they are recorded. We have people from all over the world, and so sometimes the timing is not perfect, so they're all recorded. Mm -hmm. um, but if you just you know want to just be there present, ask questions because it is live, you have that opportunity as well. And then you take your finals, and then you, depending on the the term, you have some breathing room mm -hmm. afterwards, and you, people travel or you know just rest and then you prepare for the next reading period and then you do it all over again yeah yes yeah. That's exciting. it's it's so amazing it's been the best experience um, I didn't have a chance we talked about studying abroad mm -hmm. I didn't have a chance in undergrad so this is my like studying abroad experience right That's <laughs> so. awesome. yeah, and you know I, I, you have a profession some people are looking to change careers mm -hmm. and so the career support representatives yes. also travel with you so it's like you know they do really concierge levels yeah service. Susan Susan is my coach and she has been amazing like I she knows that um, I'm an entrepreneur and there's been times where I'm like well maybe I should just shift to consulting and she was like but you've built something so amazing if you shift to something completely different like what about what all you've built and I'm like I like you Susan <laughs> like yes I, like, I don't want to get in and like pigeonhole myself into yeah. like what's expected of me after this process and so she's just been very instrumental and and so encouraging just to have just knowing like I can just hey can I have a session <laughs> you know yeah, exactly. I call them sessions <laughs> <laughs> what about 
about you, Maggie? What's a typical day like for you as a second year MBA? And what yeah. are the different things in addition to DAFA, uh, Duke Armed Forces Association? What else are you involved in? Yeah. Um, I'll go with my tomorrow. So tomorrow I have two <laughs> classes, two courses. Um, I have a course in entre entrepreneurial finance, um, which is fantastic. Um, and then, so we'll go through that. There's a lot of case discussion in that, which is great. Um, and then after I have the lunch break, um, which is usually filled with having lunch with a classmate or having a meeting, depends on the day. Um, Tomorrow I'm just having lunch with a friend, a classmate, catching up. Uh, and then after that I'm in a valuations course. So going through different ways to evaluate um, companies. Uh, and after that I have a meeting. We're planning our Special Olympics auction. So um, aside from being the co-president for the Duke Armed Forces Association, I'm the co-president for our Special Olympics club. Um, and that's uh, a great it's a, one of the oldest clubs at Fuqua. It's been around since before the 80s. Like, I can't even remember. I actually don't even know the year, but it was back in the 80s it was founded. Um, and we are one of the largest donators for the Special Olympics of, uh, of North Carolina. Wow. So we're doing an auction to raise money where classmates donate different things for the silent auction. Um, and then live auction, Sherry, you're doing a spin class donation, <laughs> which will be fun. So <laughs> quick plug, come in April 23rd. Um, but planning that, um, and then in addition to that, I, um, I'm i an admissions fellow. So I do interviews for admissions. I just finished a write-up the other day for someone I interviewed. Um, and then I'm also a Cole fellow. So um, with the Center of Leadership and Ethics, I am a mentor to first year students in their C lead teams, um, so all of those different days will yeah. take up some of my time. I'm also married. So. <laughs> That's what I was going to ask you. So how, yeah. how do you make time for your partner, mm -hmm. and what is it like being, you know, an MBA student with a partner? Like, like thirty percent of our yeah. class, of the mm -hmm. MBA class, are partnered up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So as far as just being a partner, I mean, Fuqua is a fantastic place for that. There's so many people that I have thought are students, but they're actually partners. <laughs> um, and that's why we're not having that conversation yeah. initially, but it's just so welcoming and there's so many opportunities for partners to get involved. Um, Megan Pollard of admissions actually thought my husband was a student, which was a very <laughs> funny conversation um, last year when he had a bit more time to be coming up to Duke. Yeah. Um, but a little bit about my situation. So my husband is active duty military. So we live about an hour and a half away. And so some days I am commuting that hour, hour 20, hour and a half half depending on traffic to get up here um, and I do have a room that I rent up here as well with a woman at Duke Law which I'm very fortunate to be able to do that but even if I couldn't do that I know there's other classmates of mine who have military spouses who are doing that commute every day. Mm -hmm. um, Fuqua has a lot of chances to kind of help with that. I think you can stack your classes to only come in twice a week or whatever it may be um, so that's been very helpful as far as taking some of the pressure off last term I only had one mm -hmm. class so I was only coming in twice yeah. a week um, which was great to be able to spend more time with my mm -hmm. husband yeah. but um, yeah it's been it hasn't really felt like too much of a like people are always saying oh you do that commute like how do you do that and it's really it's so worth it um, mm -hmm. to be able to come up here and you know so many military spouses have to give up their careers um, because you're moving around all the time um, you're not near a lot of times the best training areas for the army are in the middle of nowhere so yeah. <laughs> not always the chance to go work in a city but we've been really fortunate to be able to make our paths completely align um, and I'm really grateful for that because mm -hmm. tell them where you're going I'm going to Seattle so <laughs> yes. um, my husband's gonna be working at Fort Lewis up in Seattle uh, joint base Lewis McCord and then I'm gonna be working in the city so um, it's one of the best places to be because of the short how short the the drive is the mm -hmm. commute versus somewhere like here where it's like an hour and a half it's like 40 minutes in Seattle so it's we're really excited and what part of Goldman are you going to be at what are you going to be doing so I'm going to be working in wealth management as an associate mm -hmm. advisor so um, working yes. with portfolio management investments for clients really excited yeah. yes that's Yay. fierce right <laughs> very fierce. so excited <laughs> yes all right thank, thank you, you. So now good. you're interested in venture capital I am right? so tell, talk to us a little bit about how you got interested in that and what have you done at Fuqua to help you really engage in that yeah, so going into my junior year of my undergraduate degree, I did an intern at what at the time was called Victor's Capital. Um, and I was working really closely with the managing partners, Lori Cashman and Suzanne Norris. Lori Cashman went to Duke undergrad, so go Blue Devils. <laughs> um, and they were just so incredible when they first started their firm, there was only 11% of venture capital firms who were led by females. Mm -hmm. 
and only 2% of female founded startup companies were receiving the capital funding necessary for them to basically chase their dreams and make it happen. And so they saw that gap and they stepped into it and they started a conversation and they've been working towards funding startup companies that have really diverse leaders and what they found through research and such is that diverse um, governance actually leads to a higher financial return, mm -hmm. which makes sense. You have mm -hmm. all these different backgrounds and thoughts yeah. and things that they can add to the conversation. So it was amazing to be a part of that and a financial firm who's trying to make a difference in yeah. the world, truly. It was really awesome to be a part of, and I loved the intersection between financial analysis and working really closely with these innovative, creative entrepreneurs who have great visions for what their companies can be. I think that's so rewarding and such an exciting thing to be a part of. However, I understand that you have to work your way up to being at a venture capital firm, so that's a long-term career goal, and in the meantime, just gaining more knowledge about investment and mm -hmm. private markets and different industries. That's yeah. what I'll do in the meantime until hopefully I can and one day be like that. And play professional volleyball. Yeah. <laughs> right? That's not just nothing. Right. In Italy. Yeah. 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 Okay, so I'm taking a little bit of a different direction than the usual MMS graduate, and I'm going to be playing professional volleyball overseas. Yay, um, yeah, so I have no idea where I'm going to be yet, but I signed with an agency who's speaking of fierce females. Mm -hmm. They are female-led. Both oh, my agents are incredible yes. females. Um, they're all about empowering their athletes and really looking at their athletes as human, not just mm -hmm. the volleyball player. That's really... What I kind of gained from them when I was talking to them, I could tell that they really want their athletes to be happy, and when you're happy, you produce. So mm -hmm. sure. they really focused on that, and that's why ultimately I decided to sign with them, and now they've created a profile for me, and they're yeah. marketing me all around the world, <laughs> so I really <laughs> have no idea where I'll be come wow. August, but that's part of the excitement, and mm -hmm. I've been following other athletes who are part of the agency and just seeing how exciting their journeys are and how well they're doing. I've, I'm really excited to, and fortunate to be a part of it, and we'll see where I'll be. <laughs> Fingers crossed it's somewhere awesome. It'll <laughs> so, be awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So I should get your autograph like, yeah. <laughs> right now. <laughs> well, wow, you all are awesome. Thank you so much for just joining me and having this conversation, and joining our audience and sharing so you know openly about your experiences and your thoughts and your advice. And the time has flown. We're actually amazing. It over. Oh. <laughs> but as you can see, we're having way too much fun. Yes. So thank you to all of you out there who have been listening. I hope it's been valuable information, a fun time, and, you know, and good, good luck on your journeys wherever you are in the process. We would love to have you here at Fuqua, and hopefully you have a better sense of our community and what we have and the fierce women that are here to support you. So with that, this is our final Blue Table Talk of the season. We appreciate you watching. And then tune in this fall for more episodes. So again, thank you so much to each of you. I wish you all the best of luck in thank your you. endeavors. Thank, thank you. you to all of you out there. Um, you know, good luck. Be kind to each other, and uh, be safe. Bye bye.